Welcome to Watchmen on the Wall, a daily outreach of Southwest Radio Ministries and SWRC.com. This week, Micah Van Hus will reveal the details behind the world's secret societies, and archaeologist Scott Stripling reveals the how and why of biblical archaeology. Friends, we continue to need your help. Historically, summertime giving is always slow, but this year, giving is at a critical level. Unfortunately, we're having to further cut expenses, including reducing the number of radio stations we're on and eliminating staff. We need your help. Please continue to pray for Southwest Radio Ministries and ask the Lord to provide the needed funds so that we can continue to proclaim the good news that God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. And as you're led, please consider giving a gift to our summer relief effort. Your one-time and monthly gifts are needed this month. You can give when you call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also give at our website, swrc.com. Thank you, friends, for your prayers and continued financial support. Now, here's today's host, Marginal Mysteries Director and author of the brand new book, Secret Societies, Micah Van Hus. Welcome to the program today. I am your host, Micah Van Hus. I host Marginal Mysteries for Southwest Radio Ministries, and it's great today to be on the Watchman on the Wall program talking with you. We are going to, over the next couple of days, we are going to talk about my latest book, Secret Societies, Blood Never Sleeps. Those who have been listening for a while, this is my third book. My first book was Ancient Cities and the Gods Who Built Them. My second book was The Earth As It Was. And my third book, which we will talk about today, is Secret Societies. I have also released last month a children's book, A Boy and His Dinosaur. So if you're like me and you believe God's Word in Genesis chapter 1, when he says that he made mankind and dinosaurs on the same day, which would be day 6, well then you believe that mankind and dinosaurs coexisted on this earth. So I've got a children's book out, A Boy and His Dinosaur. You can get it at swrc.com or marginalmysteries.com, or you can call for any of my books to Southwest Radio Ministries at 800 652 1144. So, secret societies. When we get into these mysterious topics, I want to start with asking you, what is your foundation for your worldview? When you look at the world, when you look at the mysteries of the world, when you look at anything in the world, what is it that you base your beliefs on? Is it what your favorite celebrity says? Is it what your favorite sports star says? Well, I contend that your foundation for your worldview be one thing and that is the Bible, the Word of God. It was at Pensacola Christian College over 20 years ago now where I read my Bible through from cover to cover, and I realized at Pensacola Christian that just because a Christian said something or even just because a pastor said something doesn't mean that's what God says in His Word. And so that's where I learned to make the Bible my foundation over 20 years ago. Now, knowing that the Bible is true, It gives us as Christians an advantage when looking at the mysteries of our universe. It's imperative that you filter everything that you hear through God's Word, and that also includes what you're about to hear from me. I like to talk about the mysterious topics, uh, the things in the margins, today's secret societies. So filter everything that I say through your knowledge of the Word of God. Now, as we study uh, the Bible, as we study secret societies, it's important to not lose sight of the fact of what Jesus Christ did for us. Jesus Christ is the central point of history. He is also the central point of God's Word. While it's awesome to study the mysteries, it's all for naught if you miss the point of it all. Why do secret societies exist? Well, the Freemasons, they give grants for education and disaster relief. The Bilderberg Group promotes world peace. Catholics believe that priests in the Catholic Church have authority to forgive sins. Now, this all sounds pretty good. Now, organizations will claim to be doing good works while hiding their true intentions. Priests in the Catholic Church also have authority, quote-unquote, to deny forgiveness of sins. 
The Winterhelschwerk was an annual Nazi donation drive which fed the poor and promoted the German welfare state. The United Nations uh, peacekeepers, we know the United Nations does humanitarian work and peacekeeping all around the world. Well, a decade ago, a number of them were convicted for trading children in the sex slave industry. So are secret societies just social clubs for the political elites and ultra-wealthy, which they use to virtue signal? Or is there something older and more sinister at play? Now, a power does not have to be visible to be effective and active. Since the days of Nimrod, rooted in the knowledge of the antediluvian watchers, secret societies have been working to usher in human enlightenment, ascend humanity into godhood, and provoke a final battle with the Creator. Now, Satan is the great deceiver. He has nestled himself so close to the cross that he may deceive even the very elect, as God says in his word. The Catholic Church, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, they all have a secret, which we're going to talk about. What is the end times great deception that God warns us about in Scripture? Has the ancient city of Atlantis been reborn? What is the mystery religion of Babylon? Are the elites and the World Economic Forum working toward a great reset in order to usher in a new world order? Why have so many prominent American politicians visited the Bohemian Grove? These are all questions that we're going to attempt to answer over the next couple of days. As we study the various organizations throughout these radio interviews, it's important to note that many of the initiates, the members or employees, the low level members of these groups are ordinary and good people, and they really have no idea what's going on at the top of their organizations. Institutions of mankind, even Protestant churches, and especially the Catholic Church, are subject to a man's leadership. I recommend that instead of a religion, one seeks a relationship with Jesus Christ, our Creator and our Savior. Now, during the founding of the United States, the powers behind the scenes desperately wanted America to be Atlantis Reborn, a place to bring back the ancient gods usher in a final battle with the quote-unquote oppressive God of the Bible, and ascend humanity into a new age of enlightenment in the cosmos. Now, we see this primarily in Francis Bacon's work, A New Atlantis, where he wanted the United States to be a place to bring back the old gods. He wanted Atlantis to be reborn. Now, we talk about the city of Atlantis a little bit in my newest book, Secret Societies. We talk about it a bit a lot, actually, in my first book, Ancient Cities and the Gods Who Built Them, and the fascinating topics of the gods, the lowercase gods, who ruled Atlantis. And now currently, even this week, I am writing my latest book, Angels Eternal, and again, we are talking about the gods who ruled the nations, and we find that in Scripture, but that's a topic for a little bit later. Fascinating stuff. It is obvious to uh, most people that Freemasonry had a profound and obvious influence on the founding of the United States of America. But through my studies, I don't believe that that Freemasonry ever fully succeeded in controlling the United States or the world. I think that the Illuminati, the Freemasons, they want to desperately control all of humankind. They want to control the nations. I don't think they have a full grip yet. Their influence is obvious even today, but they don't have full control, and that's my opinion. Now, at the time of our founding, a schism was created in Freemasonry. George Washington and his generals, even the majority of Freemasons in our country in the late 1700s, they adhered to the teachings of God and of the Bible. But as I said, there was a schism, there was a split in Freemasonry, because in 1776, the same year as our country's founding, The Illuminati was created with the goal of fomenting revolutions throughout Europe, and by extension, when you foment revolution in Europe in those days, you're also fomenting revolution in the colonies of the European countries, which is also the American colonies. Now, to achieve their goal, the Illuminati infiltrated Freemason lodges, they taught the secrets of the Watchers, and they corrupted Freemasonry. When they were first starting, they were trying to get new members 
The best and quickest way to get new members for the Illuminati is to infiltrate Freemason lodges because Freemasonry was already spread around. Freemasonry quickly became an organization controlled by the pagan gods of old, teaching that humans would one day ascend into godhood ourselves. Uh, We can see this schism in Freemasonry at the founding of our country between Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. As we already said, George Washington adhered to the teachings of God and of the Bible. Benjamin Franklin adhered to the Illuminati Freemasonry teachings based on human enlightenment and, in turn, heavily influenced Thomas Jefferson. You can see the struggle between the two sects of Freemasonry in the nation's Declaration of Independence, which uses three different names for God, nature's God, creator, and divine providence. Now, Benjamin Franklin, uh, he was into all kinds of other things, the Hellfire Club, which was a sex club. He uh, spent a lot of time with the Illuminati Freemasonry in France and doing other things with the Hellfire Club in France. So, we again, we do see the schism in Freemasonry at the founding of our country. We also see it in a painting called The Apotheosis of Washington. This is a painting that's located in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol building on the ceiling today. If you go into the Capitol building and look up in the rotunda, you will see this painting, The Apotheosis of Washington. It depicts President George Washington sitting among the Roman gods in heaven. Now, apotheosis apotheosis means to become a god or ascension into godhood. Now, in the Garden of Eden, how did the serpent get Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? What did he tell her? He told her that she would gain knowledge, and become like God. Again, the ascension into godhood, which is what we see happening to George Washington among the Roman gods in the U.S. Capitol today. So what does this ascension into godhood have to do with the secret societies? Through the hermetic religions and philosophies, such as New Age, Hinduism, Buddhism, Shinto, all those Eastern religions that started in 2000 B.C., those are the hermetic religions. And through them, they taught that the fallen angel princes of the air would one day lead humankind into enlightenment, and that we as humans, if we evolve into a higher state of mind through knowledge, will become gods ourselves. The story of the Hermetic religions comes from the Greek god Hermes, who those Hermetic religions come from. Why do we call those the Hermetic religions? Well, the story goes that. Hermes, the Greek god, found the knowledge of the watchers after the flood. So let's back up a little bit. In Genesis chapter 4, we get the sons of Lamech. The sons of Lamech are the first in the Bible that really have some kind of knowledge that comes out of nowhere. One plays the harp and the organ, one is an animal husbandman. Tubal-Cain, one of Lamech's sons, was an artificer of metals. He mixed brass and copper and the different metals. And so Scripture does not expound upon this story, but there are a dozen ancient writings that do talk about the sons of Lamech, which is before the flood, and they say that the sons of Lamech knew that the Creator was going to destroy the earth. They didn't know if it was going to be with fire or water, so they carved the forbidden knowledge of the Watchers onto two different pillars, one that would survive fire and one that would survive water. What is this knowledge of the watchers? Well, we back up into Genesis chapter 6, excuse me, go forward into Genesis chapter 6, and we read that the sons of God rebelled against Elohim. They came down to earth, took human women, and sired the giants. The apocryphal book of Enoch and even the book of Revelation says that the angels taught knowledge to mankind. And the book of Enoch expounds on the list of them teaching humankind metal mixing, armor, weapons, makeup, astronomy, astrology, abortion, writing, the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars, all kinds of different knowledge that the angels taught to mankind. And that is the knowledge of the watchers that was recorded on the two pillars. Now, there are three Arabic legends. They say that it was recorded on one tablet called the Emerald Tablet. So if you've ever heard of or studied the Emerald Tablet, it's the same thing as the knowledge of the watchers that survived the flood. It's just the Arabic accounts. Some say that the pyramids were built before the flood, and that the pyramids were actually built to house the knowledge of the watchers. Those are all theoretical and fascinating to study, but we won't go too deep into that. 
But the Greek god Hermes, after the flood, finds the knowledge of the Watchers, and he shares that knowledge with Nimrod, and that enables Nimrod to be an extremely powerful and rebellious man against God. But we're going to get to that in a minute. The Apotheosis of Washington, the painting on the U.S. Capitol building rotunda, was painted after George Washington's death. And in my opinion, it was the Illuminati side of Freemasonry sticking it to George Washington and the more God following folks who were Freemasons. And so after Washington's death, I believe they had that painted by a gentleman, by the way, who was a painter for the Vatican. And we're going to get into the Vatican a little bit later. Also, surrounding the Apotheosis of Washington are 72 stars. And what do the 72 stars represent? Well, on the back side of the dollar bill, the unfinished pyramid also has 72 unfinished bricks in it. 72 is the number of gods, lowercase, who ruled the world in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8, after the flood, after the Tower of Babel incident. And again, uh, I have been writing on the Divine Council and other things for my upcoming book, Angels Eternal, and we're getting uh, more in-depth into the gods, the princes of the nations, the princes that we find in Daniel chapter 10 and elsewhere. Today we are studying my book, Secret Societies. If you would like to get a copy of it, you can do so at marginalmysteries.com, marginalmysteries.com, as well as my other books, t-shirts, DVDs, and other things. You can also go to Southwest Radio Ministries website, swrc.com, or call Southwest Radio Ministries at 800 652 1144. Now, before we get to Nimrod, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the United States. The Bohemian Grove is an elite club of who's who in American politics and business. The Bohemian Grove is located in the redwoods of Northern California. One of the annual ceremonies is the cremation of care where members dress in robes, carry torches, and sacrifice a straw human effigy on an altar in front of a 30-foot owl statue. Now God says in Leviticus 18.21, Thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Now, if familiar with Alex Jones, he was made famous for sneaking into the Bohemian Grove and filming this ceremony in the year 2000 the cremation of care, why would a bunch of grown men partake in ceremonies like this at the Bohemian Grove? Well, why would U.S. Presidents Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon partake? We have photos of those gentlemen at the Bohemian Grove. It's also uh, the Bushes attend a Bohemian Grove. Hillary Clinton has been to Bohemian Grove. They, they're now letting women in, but for a century they did not. Hillary Clinton and Queen Elizabeth were the only two that were ever let in. So what is the origin of the secret societies? Well, we already talked about the sons of Lamech who had knowledge, and that knowledge was preserved through the flood on one of the pillars or the emerald tablet. And after the flood, Nimrod found it through the Greek god Hermes. Let's read a little bit about Nimrod, a mighty hunter and empire builder in Genesis chapter 10. Verse 8, and Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord. So here in Genesis 10, the phrase before the Lord means in the face of or against. A mighty hunter is better translated a mighty hunter of men. Nimrod was a slaughterer and a conqueror. Now verse 10 says that the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Now, it's also worth noting that Nimrod is very likely the great conqueror Sargon of Akkad from old Babylonian tablets. Nimrod built the first great post-Diluvian empire known as Babylon. His cities were the first to worship pagan gods, and out of Babylon would come false religion and sinful practices. Nimrod's wife is Semiramis, according to ancient writings. Now, while scripture doesn't record Nimrod as building the Tower of Babel, other legends do. The tower was a symbol of human achievement and self-sufficiency in defiance of God. Now, as a fascinating side note, the first century writer Josephus records that in those days, people were hesitant to come out of the mountains and into the plains because the flood waters were still receding on the earth in the days of Nimrod. 
Now, according to the Freemason Regis Manuscript in 1390 AD, Nimrod was the Freemason's first excellent grandmaster. He mastered geometry, one of the seven sacred sciences. Masonic accounts record that Nimrod built pyramid-like ziggurats, solidifying his status as a master mason. According to those traditions, Nimrod employed over a thousand masons to build the Tower of Babel. Nimrod appreciated their craft so much that he made them free men and continued to use them to build Nineveh and other cities expanding towards the east, according to scripture. Now, according to the spring 2006 issue of Freemasonry Today, some Freemason lodges require apprentices to take the Oath of Nimrod, solidifying their loyalty to the society. Now, how was Nimrod able to build his empire and likely the Tower of Babel? In Genesis chapter 6, the watchers descended to the antediluvian earth and corrupted Elohim's creation. And again, we talked about the forbidden knowledge that was taught to the sons of man and passed on through the tablets to Nimrod by Hermes. The Emerald Tablet uh, that we talked about is where we get the as above, so below symbol of Baphomet. We also have a statue of George Washington giving the as above, so below symbol, the right hand raised with two fingers, the left hand extended down with two fingers as well. Baphomet brings us to the Knights Templar who were accused of worshiping Baphomet by King Philip IV of France. We're going to talk about the Knights Templar in just a little bit, but as we see with the statue of George Washington, there were obviously powers that wanted the United States to be New Atlantis and host the return of the gods. When we get into Hermeticism, it's the idea that a primeval divine wisdom is revealed only to the most ancient, enlightened sages. Now, there are ancient religions and philosophies that teach human enlightenment, leading into the New Age movement. These sages, as we talk about this stuff, are known as ascended masters, and the knowledge of the watchers is also known as the great arcanum. So if you see those terms in history, ascended masters or great arcanum, we're talking about the knowledge of the watchers and or people who have become so enlightened through that knowledge that they have become ascended masters. They have become immortal, according to theosophy. Some of the figures in history that are said to have become ascended masters would be St. Germain, Jesus, Buddha, according to their New Age religions. So the people of Babylon, led by Nimrod, disobeyed God's directive to spread throughout the earth and multiply. Instead, they came together to make a name for themselves, lest they be scattered throughout the earth. Nimrod, with the ancient knowledge of the watchers, had become the people's god, lowercase. Let's read in Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. God confounds the people's language and separates the world into 70 nations, according to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Here in history and in scripture, we find exactly what we expect to find. Instantaneously, God divides the world into 70 different languages. The people instantaneously are all speaking 70 different languages. Well, if Nimrod is their God, we find 70 cultures all worshiping the same pagan God, but by different names. Nimrod became, in other cultures, Jupiter, Cupid, Osiris, Tammuz, Plutus, Marduk, Moloch, the constellation Orion, among others. Simramis is Nimrod's wife, and in other cultures, she became Fortuna, Venus, Isis, Aphrodite, Ishtar, among others. Through Nimrod, his wife, and the antediluvian knowledge of the Watchers, began the mystery religion of Babylon, mysticism, and the occult. Again, they would manifest in Hinduism, Buddhism, Theosophy, the New Age movement, and the Jewish Kabbalah, among others all based on the idea that the Creator is oppressive and that humanity will one day evolve, becoming enlightened, and ascend into gods ourselves. In Egyptian mythology, Nimrod became Osiris, and his wife Semiramis becomes Isis. In Egyptian mythology, Osiris is killed by his uncle Seth and brought back to life by Isis. Now, there are hieroglyphs of Osiris. 
displaying him with green skin, pretty much showing that he's a zombie. He also has an elongated skull, which is a trait of the Nephilim in some cultures, and that's a story for another time. Uh, We do talk about it in my book, The Earth As It Was. In the Mason's Encyclopedia, we find these words. The promise of life is Osiris. The great doctrine, the great revelation of all true mysteries, is that Osiris lives, but he is known by other names. We also, as Masons, look forward to union with Osiris, to be united with him forever. So the Freemasons teach that Nimrod will be resurrected, and they can't wait for it. Tomorrow, we're going to study the resurrection of Nimrod and what Freemasons believe about it. If you've enjoyed our talk so far today, you can get a copy of my latest book, Secret Societies, Blood Never Sleeps, at marginalmysteries.com. Marginalmysteries.com. You can also get it at swrc.com or by calling at 800-652-1144. 800-652-1144. Now, if you go to the website, marginalmysteries.com, you will also see links to all of our social media pages and also to our YouTube page where we put videos out on these topics, and we have a good time doing it. As we study these mysterious things, don't ever forget that the most important point of history and God's Word is Jesus Christ and what He did for mankind. Micah will have much more details to share on the secret societies of our world coming up on our next program. Secret Societies, the brand new book by Micah Van Hus, is here. Where did secret societies originate? What role do they play in the end times? Join Micah as he takes a look at the secret societies that have shaped our world today. Order your copy of Secret Societies when you call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also order Secret Societies on our website, swrc.com. Did the Knights Templar guard the Holy Grail and bury a vast treasure in North America? Did Freemasons mastermind the American Revolution? Why is there so much Masonic symbolism in our country's infrastructure? Are the world's most powerful families secretly serving the Illuminati? And... Should a Christian join a secret society? Join Micah Van Hus in entering the rabbit hole, exploring the answers to these questions from a biblical worldview, and discussing the topics your Sunday school teacher didn't talk about. Secret Societies by Micah Van Hus, 1-800-652-1144, or visit swrc.com. Tomorrow, we'll have part two of our series, Secret Societies. Watchman on the Wall is a production of Southwest Radio Ministries and is supported by faithful listeners like you. Please visit our website, swrc.com.